Hi, it's Natasha. And Khalil. And we are the co-hosts of Woke and Free. Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 222nd episode of Woke and Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free Wednesday, you know that Woke and Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything important to us, you, the world, and nothing is off the table. This week, we are really addressing something that's really important for the whole society, really, which is the question of what's the real impact of cancel culture. But before we dive deep, a couple of things to go over. First, have you gone to WokenFree.com not only to listen to this episode, but have you downloaded it through the Podbean app? If not, please do, because if you do that, that's how you're able to put in your comments and you can kind of share your thoughts on the topic. And we really want to hear your thoughts every single week. So make sure you do that. Now, if you, for some reason, cannot download another app on whatever device you catch podcasts on, then please go to WokenFree.com, go to the Listen tab, and you're, and pick the platform of choice that you're going to listen and follow and subscribe to the show at. So for instance... We have lots of love on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Pandora. It's a Woken Free world. So pick your platform of choice and have at it, guys. Now, of course, on WokenFree.com, we all also ask that you click to subscribe to follow the show at the top of the site. And when it comes to social media, you can always holler at us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest, and LinkedIn at Woken Free. Now... If you have like a couple of extra seconds, which you do, COVID-19, you got 90 seconds. We'd love a review of the show. So we have, you know, some really a wonderful reviews on iTunes, but review the show on the platform of choice that you'd like to do. So again, where do you pick? WokenFree.com, the listen tab. I'm going to kick it to you now, Kalo. Hokey dokey. Before we start the conversation, we'd like to share a little bit about ourselves. This week, we're asking, would you rather take a walk or do some yoga? So that's really interesting. I would say for me, given my history <laughs> with yoga, <laughs> uh, I definitely would say take a walk because I find walks to be very therapeutic and relaxing. And then also I love to like dance and walk because I am extra like that. So I, I, I vote for walking. How about you? I'll do the walk because you don't need a mat or anything. You could just walk anywhere. Ah, you could true. walk inside the building. You don't have to walk outside necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yoga is like a whole process to get into. It is. I do admire people that are <laughs> like hardcore, thing. hardcore yoga heads. Though. I think that that's really cool. I just you give them their props, but I mean, yeah. walking is classic. Everybody knows how to walk, though, right? That's the thing. If or, yes, if able to, yeah. yes, absolutely. Most people are walking around, so mm -hmm. that's the thing. You know, it's. You got to ask what kind of impact is it when you walk versus doing yoga, but we like to go into the episode instead and figure out mm -hmm. what's the real impact of cancel culture. Wonderful transition, sir. So with that, I would <laughs> yeah. say let's first just define cancel culture. So according to Vox, and I think that's how you say it. Uh, yeah, it is. Within the turbulent past few years, the idea that a person can be canceled, in other words, culturally blocked from having a prominent pla public platform or career has become a polarizing topic of debate. The rise of cancel culture and the idea of canceling someone coincides with a familiar pattern. A celebrity or other public f figure does or says something offensive, a public backlash often fueled by politically progressive social media ensues. And then comes the calls to cancel the person. That is to effectively end their career or revoke their cultural cachet, whether through boycotts of their work or disciplinary action from an employer. Uh, so that pretty much, I think, sums up kind of what we've seen so far, which is, you know, to Vox's point, someone says something, does something, and then they're just deaded. And it's, and what's really interesting, and it's not just like for a time period, but it seems like people want to like dead you forever. Like yeah. you can no longer come back. You are unredeemable. And that's just a really harsh and intense response. And I get it. People are, you know, have done egregious things in this world. However, for those who are, I think, not necessarily breaking moral fibers of society, I, I don't know if this is ever, I don't know if this is ever an appropriate response. I don't think it is. But if it is, I think that people are over exercising it because to lose your livelihood or lose credibility or respect in society or be, feel silenced or unable to, to speak 
because of said incident or said transaction is is a very extreme uh, situation going on in our society. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, this is it's a crazy thing to cancel culture because you don't even think about the impact it has on those people's family too who get canceled because mm. oftentimes it'll affect their well being as well. So. You're, you're affecting a whole group of people, not just actually one person, but mm-hmm. nobody ever thinks about that. They just think about whatever act the person committed when they do it. Mm-hmm. And I think another thing is it actually canceling people suppresses dialogue that, you know, a, a majority of people within specific parts of society might agree with. So, mm-hmm. you know, like there will be this small group of people that maybe they, they want to do harm to our nation, right? And... If you cancel, like, maybe one of the figureheads, then all of them go basically into these little chat rooms, which people call, like, echo chambers, and they'll just mm. plot and do things, and nobody knows what's really going around, going on in those chat rooms except for them, and they'll agree. Mm-hmm. And ultimately what it does is it strengthens their baseless opinions, which, you know, then it'll eventually rear its ugly head, and... The thing I think about, like, a perfect example of this is, like, with the people who did the Capitol riots. Because mm. they were plotting these events in these small groups. And because mm. people would basically cancel any of these, like, really right-wing people and not let them speak and yeah. not hear them. That's why these little groups formed in these small private places instead of just talking publicly. Because they were scared yeah. that, yeah, they'll be canceled and, you know, their livelihood will be gone, so... Instead, you have these these things festering. So mm. that that's that's one thing that can come out of it. Stuff as extreme as that. Wow, that's really intense. So it kind of creates <laughs> septic conversations and places in the internet for people to gather and and kind of spew together and, yeah. and maybe even create a bigger monster than what society intended to have. Happen, Basically, probably. yeah. Wow. They they think you cancel it oh, and then it's okay. gone, but, but it's actually not. it goes oh. into this little place that you like don't know about and gets worse situation yeah. yeah and it comes out to rear its head eventually okay interesting so then one has to wonder is cancel culture sustainable no as barack obama said actually this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're politically woke and all that stuff you should get over that quickly mm. the world is messy there are ambiguities People who do really good stuff have flaws. So that's, mm. I like that last part the most because just think yeah. about it. People do, there's a, a ton of people who've done great stuff for this world. And guess what? They weren't perfect. They have flaws too. Imagine if they were canceled for some of those small things they did. Yeah. They would have never gotten to do any of the great stuff that helped change society forever. So exactly. That's kind of a problem too. You, we don't want to think about it. What if this person? That you canceled went on to actually really help out society, but mm. you stopped them, you canceled them, and now they're not able to make that change. Exactly. I completely agree. I would say cancel culture is not sustainable because everyone is cancelable in theory. And canceling us, like as 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 we think about that, it when is when is there an end to it? There isn't an end because the canceler can can become cancelled at some point. And to your point, we don't want to put people in a position where they could have done really good in this world, but because they didn't have the support or the resources because they were so in called canceled, now we've lost good work or good impact in this world. That It doesn't make sense. I think we have to get back to a place of understanding and empathy and teach somebody, right? Teach somebody when they when they say something wrong, when, when their bias has gotten the best of them, or when they are failing to understand the impact that they're having with their negativity or their small-mindedness. But to say outrightly, like you can never have make money, you can never do anything in this world is not teaching them how to change their perspective. It's punishing them for who they are. And all human beings uh, have the ability to change because the only final thing that we have in this life is death. Everything else is a moving target. Everything. Yeah. So That's why true. not like focus in on the opportunity that we have to to educate and, and to grow and evolve together as a society and stop deading each other. Now, other question then would be, is there an alternative to cancel culture? Yeah, I think we need to actually be open just to allow people to redeem themselves. We Mm -hmm. should discuss what they did and why it's not currently acceptable. And Mm -hmm. when I say currently, I mean current, because often things acceptable like a decade ago are off the table now, right? Sure. That's because as time goes on, we are able to look back at our faults, deciding Mm -hmm. how to prevent those problems going forward. So. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to just dead people. We can actually just open up the, a discussion 
and maybe even have like a moment where they can, I mm-hmm. don't know, take a course on how to maybe treat people better in this scenario. Because sometimes Absolutely. people have like, they've hurt a specific group of people by saying, like saying something that's not, you're not supposed to say. So Absolutely. maybe they don't know why it's wrong. You know, you go into details and mm-hmm. just open up discussion because maybe there's a whole bunch of people that have that same question or opinion. Mm-hmm. So just get it off the table and have a forum. Yeah, that maybe. makes sense. I, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? We always know better after the fact. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I completely agree with you. I think we should go double down on instead of the, the cancel culture kind of uh, attitude that we have, but more so let's go into sensitivity training. Let's go into educational workshops. Let's go into empathy and double down on forgiveness and any type of training that would help people see the error of their ways and to heal, heal from that moment and to also help other people heal because we're all walking, talking uh, points of trauma. And some of us are inflicting more trauma than others. But at the end of the day, for us to say none of us have been hurt by somebody is ridiculous. Someone and all of us are perpetrators and or victims of pain and trauma. So let's, you know, all understand we live in glass houses. We can't throw stones. Let's heal together. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what's the, what's the, what's the scenario? It's scenario time, guys. Scenario one. So who started a website called Stop the Steal, where he calls out numerous elections in which he proposes were illegitimate? He doesn't provide any sources, but allows people to vote on how likely each election was rigged. Some super liberal people caught wind of this website and banded together to perform a DDDOS attack on the website daily to the point that so who could not afford to keep the website up? Is this the best action the liberal heroes can take, or is there another option? Wow, that's really a convoluted scenario. So I would say based on the premise that's been shared today, I think that there is probably... (sighs) Okay. So just to be clear, though, is this person, is Sahu making money from the website? Or is it just this kind of uh, uh, wanting to engage people as to kind of figuring out which elections were illegal? No, he's not making money at this point. Okay. But is that the intention of the website? Or just to, make to bring money? awareness? Yeah. No, it's not to make money. It's definitely just to bring people together on, okay. on elections and how right they were performing. And do you want to break safe out they were. the DDoS attack just so folks oh, know what that means? The, the distributed denial of service. Mm-hmm. It's just where a ton of computers or servers, they all go to one website mm-hmm. to the point that the website can't serve them all. So it usually goes down or mm. the connection's really slow. So the people won't be able to see the website anymore. You won't be able to access it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and no one spoke to the Zahu. They just did this. They just went on the attack to do it. Oh, yeah, of course. They didn't tell them they were going to do it. They just did it. This hap- This is yeah. real, too. This is not okay. a... I mean, this kind I mean, of thing I, happens. Again, I think that people should be given and in, informed, like, you know, some type of, you know, hey, we find an opportunity to understand what the offense is and then to be able to reply or retort or something as opposed to just taking down the website. I mean, because it doesn't necessarily seem in and of itself that the website is causing issue. It seems like it is you know, swayed one way for sure. But I don't know. I feel like I need more information. And I think that Sahu should be given notice of of kind of the offense that the person is taking as opposed to just shutting down their website. But what are your thoughts? So my thoughts are, the problem is, is depending on if, if these were elections that are done in the US, I mean, and this person's not providing any sources and just like mm-hmm. putting up this thing it's kind of like he's propaganda right now. yeah he's putting up propaganda and he's he's kind of just making a supposition that our elections they're not safe so it, it's i don't know i think it's kind of like he's spreading fake news pretty much by doing this because it's okay. he could also do a website that says oh which of these restaurants serves real meat and you know if you do that and it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna piss them off they're gonna like why you because if people vote yeah. oh you have fake meat and it's not true but isn't it almost like uh defamation it kind, of, it's kind of like a and they're going to get mad at him yeah. because why did he even suppose but then that? shouldn't someone <laughs> send notice right like so if someone did that you would say hey like you know see cease and assist like stop what you're yeah, doing yeah right? so uh, that's that's what i but feel he did, he's but so who never received that it was not just current. i mean well i don't think he can either because but for something political you can't you can do this you can it, 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 you can uh, make a site like this there's nothing against no, it. no no i mean no but no one sent uh nobody uh, can 
Well, I'm, um, I'm saying, so if you have anything to say about an election, you can say yeah, whatever you want. There's nothing, nothing against oh, that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, there's no law, like, there's laws that protect you in terms but of being able to speak be about, about an election. But don't you think it would be better to receive some type of notice as opposed to them people can, just shutting your website but who, down? I mean, people, yeah. Uh, they can send a letter just saying the, we find your website to be offensive or can that, you provide sources, like, some oh, type yeah, of yeah. notice. Like, yeah, yeah, that, that's, I mean, I mean <laughs> to do the, because, you know, these attacks, it's technically you're breaking terms of agreement for most internet providers by doing that. Yeah, so. You're not I mean, supposed to do that either way, that it attack. It seems like, a, I don't know, it seems like a rough like a very drastic response to it that. is they didn't even yeah they should have no notice what they could have done is just band it together and, and you know what they could they could have some people do this too is they go right to the whatchamacallit whoever's serving up his website yeah the host they go to his host and they say hey we don't like what they're putting there and then sometimes the host will pull down yeah. the site too. So I don't think they had to band together and do this thing, but they, they should have at least told him, Hey, some I, don't, type of notice I don't think it's of, right. Cause, cause you're again, what if someone who doesn't <laughs> things. that what he's, what that he's doing is, uh, offensive, right? What if he, but he might not think he might, there's people that really believe this too. So that they believe mm-hmm. our elections are not safe. So if he really believes this and he wants to get this out and he wants other people to back his opinion, see, that's yes, the hard part. Yeah. But I don't think they want to buy it the right way. I always have conversation before someone tries to shut you down. Again, right? We shouldn't be canceling people. We shouldn't be sh- silencing people. We have to have a world where we can have woken free conversations, right? You might not yeah. agree with something, but even just the suggestion, hey, can you put a source? Can you state stuff? Like, you know, even yeah. some type of, I don't know. It just seems extreme. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. The, but this does happen. People do this. Mm-hmm. You say something that. It's based on some, it's kind of based on fake news and yeah. then other people like, you know what, we're just going to shut you down. We're not even going to tell Sounds anybody about you. Wild, we're yeah. just taking you down. This is a real thing. This happens like every couple of months or so, okay. or even often than that. But yeah, there's definitely other options. Scenario two, Constance was an advocate for a popular human rights activist who exposed the corrupt government's treatment of its people. Unfortunately, it came out that the activist was running an illegal brothel for the past 10 years. The activists had been working on another expose, but no news outlet would touch it because of the scandal. Should the activist's work be released, even with all the controversy surrounding her? Wow, that's interesting. Okay, so... Okay, so the activist here has, I'm assuming, has not apologized or taken any accountability for the illegal brothel, right? Well, I can't because, lo- you know, lawyers say you got to keep quiet okay. while this is all like the, the trial According hasn't gone through. Scenario thoroughly. thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> my <right>. Scenario thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. If you want to say okay. that. Okay. Excellent. Okay. That's the line of thinking we're thinking. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, why you got to put it back on my scenario thoughts? Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, so I would say based on the lack of accountability in the, uh, in the situation, then it makes sense that no outlet is going to want to associate with this activist because the activist was doing a legal activity, not for 10 minutes or a year, but 10 years, you know, doesn't, does it discredit the good work fully of what the activist did outside of this brothel? No, it doesn't, but it does dim the light a little bit, right? It makes the person less uh, shiny and bright and, and good in the sky because they, you know, have people, you know, doing this sex stuff. So <laughs> it's a little, a little bit sus there. <laughs> Come on, there's certain businesses that are based around sex work, so you can't Amazing. even go like that. God bless. The problem me. with this, this was an illegal one, though. Correct. We See, have to again. We can wasn't do following the law. Sexual activity. We just have to keep it up, up on the up up. Yeah. <laughs> like we gotta, we gotta be legal in all aspects of our lives, guys. And so with that, I would say that until the activist takes accountability and kind of uh, can position themselves to be apologetic and to also make, you know, take retribution for what has happened, then any other work that the activist is doing is not going to be able to be either seen by the light or is not going to be taken seriously because there's no accountability here. You have to own your nonsense, right? We have to kind of, you know, be adults. So what are your thoughts? That's that's what I think is wrong with today's cancel culture Mm because this work that was being released could have saved 500,000 lives. So I wouldn't 
I'm not risking those 500,000 lives just because she was is doing this legal are not brothel. Gonna, but people are not going to hear it. They're not, because they're, but just they're, get the story out either way. But it, Yeah, but it might just be on a blog that's seen by 500 people. No, they don't know, but I'm saying the news needs to release. I, I see, because this but is they're asking, not going should to, it? unless this activist comes to term with the I'm other saying thing. the news should, though. I'm not saying, oh, okay. like, I'm saying the, the work needs to be released. You can't just mm. hold it hostage and then all these people are just living in terror that's and they're going to, gotcha. their lives are at risk just because this person wasn't on up and up yeah. like that's that doesn't discredit the work it though. doesn't discredit it but and this I stuff think. is and the, people's lives are on the line this is crazy that people are willing to cancel someone based off this illegal activity that they did when they can save all the tons of people just by just saying whatever gotcha. you did your own thing like that to me is insane to do that to just cancel yeah. somebody who could save a lot of lives that's gotcha. crazy yeah i mean it's but it's i would <laughs> i would say no you shouldn't risk other people's lives but we the person does need to take accountability for what they did Scenario three, Tamita runs a cat blog that has an avid following of people. She herself has nine cats on her premises. One day she brought a dog home and gave all her cats to friends and family. She made an announcement on her blog the following day. The fans went berserk, sending her tons of hate messages. They even lied about her on other social media platforms. Is it right for people to shame and renounce someone who just changed their lifestyle as Tamina did? So, wow, that's a really interesting scenario because I'm sure it is probably based off something real or somewhat real. And so uh, I would say, hmm, I don't think it's appropriate. I mean, people are entitled to their opinion, of course. However, if Tamina is interested in, in changing her lifestyle as going from a cat owner to a dog owner, that's her privilege and her her option and her right to do so and and people don't have to support it but they shouldn't tell tales on her they shouldn't lie on her they shouldn't try to discredit her her or send hate mail and like intentionally and strategically put hatred in the world against her i think that that's a really poor response to things you know maybe even ask her maybe ask her why is she no longer interested in having cats? I mean, I feel bad for all those nine cats that have just been kind of displaced, but it is what it is. It happens in life. But the response, again, seems very negative, super extreme in, in reaction to what has happened or what has occurred. Yeah, cat shaming is real. That's what uh, I call it. Okay. So they're shaming her. This This happens in many groups where you're part of a group. And you just change one part of your lifestyle and then that group, they disown you and they come at your throat like you're an outsider and it's not the right way to be. I think okay. that's, I think that's really messed up that people do that. And wow. you should never be lying about people on their social media platform. That's just, that's bad all around, right? Absolutely. Let's be honest. So yeah, these people are wrong. Just because someone changes their opinion, you can't just come after them like that. It's not right. It'd be different if now she started coming after them and we're talking mm-hmm. about, about, you know, their cats and stuff, then, okay, I understand. Maybe, you know, hey, <laughs> don't I mean, talk so a, bad. It's not appropriate, but yeah. Not, but, but, it, but yeah, but she didn't, she didn't say anything bad about cats. She just changed. She just wants a dog. She wants a dog now, right? Let's be real. Let's give people a chance to change their minds and not go mm-hmm. berserk because of that. That's, that's not yeah. right. Absolutely. And hopefully she made sure that the cats all ended up in good homes and we'll take care of those cats, you know, the, take care of the cats. But oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we gotta, we, we have to think about, what we're doing to ourselves and what we're doing to others in this world. And not everything needs to be a war. Not everything needs to be so contentious and not everything needs to be so darn negative folks. Like we gotta, <laughs> we gotta see the, the, the brighter side of life. And yes, I understand the holidays is coming near. And so, we, you know, people might be in a better mood or more jovial. Sometimes, sometimes this actually spurs depression and, and, you know, suicidal thoughts for some. And drunken Santa. And that too. A lot of that situation. But <laughs> just generally, folks, we gotta, we gotta put a little bit more love than we do hate in this world and try to make it a better place. And with that, it looks like we're at that time again. It's the coming to the end of our 222nd episode of Welcome to Quite the episode discussing what's the real impact of cancel culture. Khalil, what should folks do now? Well, Natasha, they should come back next week really? for the new Woken Free Wednesday episode. Yeah, really? I think they should. Okay, <laughs> They could come back for the new one. Okay. You want the, Well, they can go back to the old ones, too. Yes, Khalil. Yes, that's true. <laughs> okay. Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along the conversation. And make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at... 
WokenFree.com. Wonderful, Khalil. Now, if folks want to be a guest <laughs> on the show, Khalil, yeah. then folks can submit a topic for an upcoming upcoming episode or tell us how they feel on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. That's W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. And Khalil, did you know that folks who are interested in hollering us ho- hollering at us on our social media can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn at Woken Free. Yeah, I did. Wonderful Khalil. <laughs> and for those who are interested in sponsorships, Khalil, they should hit us up on our contact us page at WokenFree.com. Is that clear, Khalil? Bravo, wife. Bravo. <laughs> That's what I say. If you didn't already subscribe, please do. Share the episode. And make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember... Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Till next time. I know that's right, Khalil.